Hello again, everyone. It's Todd Starooch, the horror nerd here at Pennsylvania HorrorCon. It's Saturday, the middle of the day, the heart of the convention. I am having a blast, and it's about to get even better because I have the honor of sitting here with the lovely and talented Cassie DePaiva. Cassie, how are you? I am so great. At better now. Aw. Because of you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's been a couple of years yes. since we first sat down. Yep. How's life been treating you? Well, as everyone, we've been in this COVID bubble, and it's been okay, but I'm ready for it to pass. And I think it's this is great for everybody to be out. And I like to see people's smiles and people's faces. And um, But I've been good. Enough stayed healthy, so it's good. That's good to hear. Yeah, it was a weird kind of a thing it's, it's almost like weird. we all had two years just erased from our collective totally, memory right totally and you know I, I mean I'm old it's like I've lived a great life or whatever but I think about those kids that are finishing high school and college and stuff I mean my son kind of got robbed his last two years of college so it's that sucked mm. Suck. yeah my my daughter just started her senior year of high school so I feel bad for all the kids well, before sure. her that didn't have a graduation. Didn't sure, have, a prom, I'm, didn't have all of that stuff. Right. A little selfishly, I'm grateful that she will actually get to have that stuff. Of course, so. that's the, as you should be. I'm happy for her, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So now we're, we're getting back out, you know, you're yep. back out hitting the convention scene. I think I may have asked you this the last time, but I'll ask it again. Okay. I may answer it, I may not. Okay, fair enough. I might enough. not even remember that last time, so okay. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Does it ever surprise you that the fans keep coming out to these shows uh, to meet you, to talk about movies that, quite frankly, came out you know, a long time ago? You know what? I am so fortunate that I got to step into this wonderful genre of horror back in 1986 doing Evil Dead 2, and who knew that a thousand years later it would still have the legs that it does so i just feel really, We're not really that lucky. old come on well come on. i am <laughs> but um i feel really lucky and then you know then i had that big soap opera career after that but i think people come up to me and i think they're going to ask me about my soap opera and then they go were you really bobby joe and i said i was <laughs> yep i was so it still has legs yeah right yeah so let me, let me follow that up with sure. the, which do you seem to get more attention for it just in general like the horror or the or the soap opera as far as well, fandom is concerned well as far as fan because I was in people's homes for pretty much every day for 35 years on some network mm. um, I would say there's facial recognition and more identifiable with my soap opera work but just as soap fans and horror fans, they're all passionate about their specific genre. So it's a, um, one half dozen of the other. But I would definitely say daytime's been the better to me. Fair enough. You know. Ah, <laughs> uh, listen. I remember my mom and her stories. That's right. right. That's up, right. Don't mom, get in the way. Don't get between stories. them. <laughs> right. Um, this might not be a fair question because it's okay. Such no, no, no. It's two different worlds, okay. right? Okay, right. What, was there one that was more fun to do, you know? Uh, are you want me to compare soap operas to horror films? Yeah. Or, okay. <laughs> um, very different. You know, soap operas, you get up every day with a whole new script. Doing a movie, you have a, a definite amount of pages, a definite amount of scenes, a beginning, middle, and end, and it's done. And then you have to wait two years sometime for it to come out so it has this like really long lifespan soap operas are wham bam thank you ma'am you know you get in you do it and it's over with and it rarely you rarely see um, reruns or anything of soap operas now you can tune in to YouTube and all that kind of stuff now right but um, it's not the same okay that's, yeah. that's yeah. interesting yeah. it is it is obviously so very different I oh, think totally. about soap operas you well you know. television television is <laughs> different than movies I mean it doesn't matter what camera you put in front of me I hope I'm going to do the, the best quality work I can possibly do but the take home is different mm. you know you have a different fan base and you have well what I'm saying with soap operas you, you work you do 250 episodes 
a year. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it's um, in a soap, I mean, in a film, you know, you just... The big movies, of course, you might take years to make, but sure. most of these movies, this movie, I think, Evil Dead, we were working for maybe six weeks, and it was a crunch. You know, it was hard. We, They busted... They busted our butts because we worked long hours. It was hot. Um, but it was so fun because Sam Raimi is such a, a, a brilliant man. So it's great. Now, I, I take a lot of heat for this from my friends. Okay. I have always felt that Evil Dead 2 was the better movie than Evil Dead. I've always said that. And I'm saying it again. My question Not is... Not going to get an argument from me. No, no, no. <laughs> right? I'm sure. My question is, do you have a favorite memory or maybe a, a favorite anecdote from making the film that you'd be willing to share with us? Well, I had no idea. I was 25. I had really no idea what I had gotten into. And the movie, I came back from shooting the movie and then I auditioned for The Guiding Light. Mm. And I got it. So when the movie uh, premiered, I was already, I had already started maybe for three months on The Guiding Light, but I went to see it. Sam was in town. We went to see it in Times Square, New York, and I'd never gone to a movie theater with a horror film, a horror film. and they talked to the screen. Don't go in there! Oh, my God! So I'm sitting there, and they're like, no, buddy, Joe, don't go in the woods! And then somebody goes... Oh my gosh, that's Chelsea from the guiding. I mean, I heard him say it's like it was. That was kind of a cool thing because they, they. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> that was that would that must have been pretty cool. Yeah, that was cool. So I just have one more about okay. about that. Is did that was there ever any? I'm not quite sure how to ask it, but was there any? Or in the, now in the soap opera world, was there ever a, 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 any sort of blowback? Like, oh, you did a horror film. Because no. you know how it is with horror. Like, people, are, like, you do those kind of movies. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I think people, they assume because you do horror films that you, you know, a lot of actors do stay in that genre. Sure. And they're, like, they're huge stars at these conventions. Um, you know, I did one, I did two, actually. We Are What We Are. Um, Jim Mickle directed mm -hmm. that. Um and I know I only got that part because I had been on Evil Dead, <laughs> Evil Dead too. So I mean, I mean, I, I know there was a connection there, because <laughs> um, I'm sure he didn't watch soap operas. Um, but uh, you know, uh, I don't think anybody holds it against me that I did uh, a horror film, and nobody holds it against me that I was a soap opera actress. I just feel I've been unbelievably ble ble blessed to have been able to do both. That is awesome. Yeah. And that's, that is a great yes. attitude. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So my final question is, what are you up to these days? It's been a couple years since we talked. Any current projects? Anything well, you're working on now? I am a movie that I just, and I did it probably four years ago, that it's called Killian and the Comeback Kids. has just been released on Netflix um, that I have a little part in. And then I'm getting ready to shoot a short film <clears throat> called common is red hair and it's about intersex babies babies that so I'm, I'm learning about I would love to be able to tell you blah 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 this is what it's about but I'm like going I don't know much about it but I play um, the grieving mother okay and I have a teenage you know making a choice and then having to deal with the consequences of a woman that made the wrong choice for her daughter when she was in infancy and now is angry at me for choosing, but gotcha. her destiny, so. Okay, sounds it's, interesting. It's very interesting. And topical. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. But it's a short, shooting it in South Carolina in October. Okay, interesting, I'll keep an eye out for it. Great, great. Fantastic. Thank you. Cassie, thank you again oh, uh, for a few pleasure. minutes of your time. It my is pleasure. great to see you again. My pleasure. And I wish you much success with that project You're, and anything else that you work kind. on. Thank, thank you. you. Cassie DePiva, everybody here at Pennsylvania Horror Con. I am Todd Sturridge, the Horror Nerd, signing off. We will see all of you in the next interview. <laughs>